Good morning, fellas. Welcome to Videos for Victory, sponsored by Mount Tabor Grand Lodge YouTube channel. Uh, today, we're going to discuss seven videos real quick and try and pull out the nuggets of wisdom that will help us and help all those that watch or hear the video, this video, this Zoom call. Uh, the first one that we're talking about is KRC, then we can't say enough, part one, can't say enough, part two. Uh, there's an interview with an apostle, Gene A. Moore Sr., and then we talk about if you are serious, and we talk about time and then the spirit of increase. All of these videos, in fact, all of the Mount Tabor Grand Lodge YouTube channel videos are geared towards growth and increase. Uh, we talk heavily a lot, at, at, at least, about personal uh, responsibility, accountability, and also educating yourself. It's our intent to help a man elevate themselves morally and intellectually. And if we can do that, then they can elevate themselves in their stature of life. Does that make sense? Okay, good. Yes, sir. I'm Baptist, so you got to say something. If not, I'll start answering my own question. All right? <laughs> this is a participation type uh, Zoom call. So if you haven't listened to all of the videos, but something is said that sparks a thought, feel free to uh, chime in. And uh, you can do that by raising your hand. So the first one we're talking about is uh KRC. This was made July 11, 2020. So let's uh let's begin. Any thoughts on that that video? Yes, that video was actually very educational. Because he touched on all the principles with very good detail. Because without knowledge, you have no information to apply anything. You won't even know what responsibility is without that information. And with control, you must know yourself in order to have control, to even control the variable what's going on around you by actually controlling your own self. You know what I'm saying? And the way you broke it down was very phenomenal. Well, thank you for that uh, compliment, and uh, we're going to try and, okay, here we go. Any other comments on, on KRC? Um, I would like to say that knowledge responsibility and control when you broke those down i realized that that those are the fundamentals to everything that we need to do in our life so basically these are the fundamentals that you need to grow if you do not have the knowledge to apply into the right path of your life you end up going down the wrong path and making mistakes but I'm not saying that mistakes are a bad thing but you end up making mistakes and then also the responsibility to own those mistakes and the responsibility to go and use your knowledge for the good path. And then you also have to have control so that you do not spend too much or you do not overindulge or you basically too much of everything is not good. So that's just basically what I got from everything. Well, you're absolutely right when you say too much of anything is not good. And that's part of our problem. We will... Uh over exert ourselves and uh, some people say we just go too far okay so uh how do we get knowledge how do we get knowledge what's the best way to get knowledge okay somebody gotta okay. share say reading? anybody <sighs> Maybe reading scriptures. Okay. My personal opinion, there are two ways to get knowledge. By experience and by observation. 
Observation. Okay. Observation of what? <laughs> they could be anything. You can actually pay attention to body language. You can observe and listen. You can also actually be hands-on and imitate what you see to get an understanding of what it is to continue to use it until you find a development within yourself of the information to apply it to make it your own. Okay. And you said experience. Mm -hmm. You know, when you don't know something and you seek out the questions, you always are placed with situations that give you the answer that you seek because everything you actually truly need to know was within. So when you put yourself out there to find it, somebody will teach you, but sometimes you might not listen to what they have to say because you feel like you know it all and you find yourself in situations to where life teaches you exactly what you need to know. So which is the best way to gain knowledge? What is the best way? Uh, Brother Mays, what's the best way to gain it? True knowledge. <clears throat> and excuse my voice, guys. Um, I've, I've been talking. True knowledge is obtained from God. That's, that's, that's first knowledge. Godly knowledge, right? So you can obtain this knowledge through reading. You can obtain this knowledge through listening to, to, um, to wholesome instruction. You can obtain knowledge through watching as well from others' mistakes, you know, and that's where the experience piece comes in as well. Okay. Uh, Brother Jason, what do you think? What's the best way to gain knowledge? I would say I would go with what Brother Brother Sage said and uh, say true observation and basically practicing. So, for instance, if you wanted to know something about um, a topic you've never heard before, you would have to go and look for someone in that topic who has knowledge in it. You could observe what they do or you could talk to them about what they do and they could tell you and then you could gain knowledge about it. That's in the worldly aspect. But if you want to talk about spiritual things, the only way to get knowledge in that is by reading the scriptures, reading holy books, reading things pertaining to that. So it's knowledge is basically the best way to get knowledge pertains to what you want to know. It's different for every single thing. But it all, it all has one thing in common, the effort to do it. Okay. Brother Gabe, any comments? Um, yeah. So knowledge, knowledge. So in order to, how do we get knowledge? Um, before we seek knowledge, we need to understand that we are in ignorance. So it starts with acknowledging our ignorant self. And ignorance is the absence of light. Right? Okay. So, so knowledge is the presence of light. Now, Proverb 1 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Right? So to me, my understanding of knowledge starts with the fear of the Lord, the, the Lord and understanding, you know, his, his principles and laws. So um, the beginning of knowledge to me starts with seeking light, which is divine light, which is the creator of all things. So why do we have to... Why are you saying and recommending that we seek the Lord in order to get knowledge? Because um, we are made in his image and he is the manufacturer of ourself. Okay. So you want to always uh, reference yourself to your maker, you know, the, the, the manufacturer policy how to, for you to function at your optimum level, 
right? Okay. So, you know, you could get, once again, coaches, mentors, classes, whatever. You could get a bunch of stuff here, but we all come back to the one source, right? Yeah. So okay. if you want the, the serious, pure knowledge of, of all things, straight to the source. No need, you don't need a middleman. <laughs> okay. Hey, you know what? Just to add on to what my brother Gabe, Gabe just said, if you want to know how your car works, your car comes with a manual, and you go seek that manufacturer, and that manufacturer will tell you how that car works. This is a manual for each uh, and every vehicle that it manufactures, and that manufacturer comes with instructions on how to get that vehicle moving. So, as Brother Gabe said, you first seek your manufacturer, you know, and once you do that, yep. you obtain the light you need and the knowledge you need to continue to move forward through instructions. Any comments? Any different views on that? Uh, yeah, comment on that. <clears throat> uh, not as Jose 4 6, I don't know if it was already said, but. It says our people perish uh, for lack of knowledge. And so uh, first, before we can do anything, we have to have a foundation. And that foundation should be the knowledge. Uh, <laughs> like you just said, that we're acquired from God and from our BSL and from our elders and from those that we trust. And uh, and also from reading. You know, uh, there's a, a horde of material and different things. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we have, that's the first thing we got to do. We have to learn how to read and then we have to learn how to listen. And it, interpret and apply what it is that we're comprehending, and uh, like I said, with the knowledge, you have a responsibility that because it says you know you are perish, not just you, but your children also, and so you know that comes to responsibility also. You have a responsibility to know because you can't lead with, uh, where you don't go, you can't teach what you don't know, and so uh, before you can do anything and move forward in any arena, whatever it is, you know you have to have the foundation of uh the information the correct information and that's another thing you know you got to make sure that you're getting the correct information because there is a lot of information and misinformation out there and so uh you have to make sure that everything if it's not lining up with your bsl and your ritual uh like Rand say all the time you need to flush it you need to get rid of it because it's trash you know and how, if it's not how, how many of y'all really I mean, I'm not asking you, but how many people do you think, and men especially, black men, read on a regular basis? What percentage do you think do, do that? Because y'all, you mentioned reading a couple of times. Okay. A lot of brothers don't like to read. I say, I say about 20% of the brothers actually read. Okay, you think 20%? 20%. I think it's high. I think that's a high number, bro. Yeah, I do too. I don't think, I think mm -hmm. it's less. I, I came across a lot of them that don't. Yeah, I think it's less than 20%. Bro. And it's, it's probably due to um, understanding and vocabulary, uh, the grasp on, on you know, the pronouncing words and understanding what they mean. And so it's uncomfortable. And people tend to stray away from the uncomfortable. Yeah. But you know, uh, I was telling you guys, we used to have an eight track player and all that kind of good stuff. What I tell brothers is this, this thing right here, you can put a um, the dictionary app on your phone. Any word, when you read any it. word you cannot pronounce, you don't know what it means. You go to the dictionary, it tells you what it means, and it'll tell you how to pronounce it. Now, mm -hmm. let's say you read, uh, it takes you maybe a, we got a 200 page book, and uh, it'll take you a week to read it, but it takes me a month. What's, what's the difference? Besides time, because of my oh. lack of vocabulary, lack of reading and understanding, what what's the difference? 
You Jason? might not understand what you read if you don't understand the words. Yeah, Jason, were you talking? Uh, I was about to say that um, there's a difference between um, reading to glance through and then reading to understand. You could read over, yes, reading to comprehend and then reading to just glance through because so you could read a line once and not really understand what it is, but you've read the line. So reading to understand is where you read a line, you don't understand what it is. You have to go back, read it again, maybe read it like three, four times, try to grasp the whole concept of what it is. And you might even have to go research what the words is, try and put yourself in that person's scenario and that place, try to understand what exactly they meant in that word. Like for instance, like when I was watching that um, KRC video, I had to watch it like three times to really get the whole concept of what he was saying. Because at first I just read it, I was like, I just listened to it. I was like, okay, no, knowledge, responsibility and control. Yeah, I understand. And then I listened to it the second time when I saw more depth into what he was saying. Like there were some words that he would just say, I was just like, okay, I get what that means. But the second time after I finished reading, hearing the whole video, I heard what those words were. I was like, okay, I understand the concept of what that meant. Okay. If you understand what I'm saying. <clears throat> okay. Well, you know, it's kind of difficult to take responsibility and have control if you don't have knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to send you back to what uh, Brother Gabe and J Brother Mays had said about going to the manufacturer, going back to God. Um, you know, when we read something, when we're seeking knowledge, okay, uh, it's always best to pray. And then at that point in time, you want to pray for understanding. Uh, there's a scripture that says, in all of you getting, it's in Proverbs, in all of you getting, get an understanding. So even when we're just talking, I need to understand what you're saying, okay? And why you're saying it before I can get upset or before I can like it or dislike it. So we have to get an understanding. In order to have a relationship with one another, we have to have an understanding. Because that's it, that's, Relationships are built on the understanding one another. And when we're reading, uh, or let me ask you this, what do you think reading do for you individually? So reading is for the mind, what is exercise for the body? Okay. So when I go to the gym, I see a lot of, you know, brothers flexing and boom, doing all this, right? But... It's the same thing, you know, it takes you, you start with, you know, five pounds, 10 pounds, you know, like the, the, the heavy lifting is progressive. Okay. Your power increases as well. So it's the same yeah. thing with re reading allows you to expand your ability to digest information, your ability to reason, your ability to problem solve your ability to comprehend and your ability to communicate eloquently, right? So the more you read, the more you know how to just put things together very quickly and the more complicated concepts you could grab. Okay, right? okay. Because just like going to the gym, you start with two pounds, three pounds, and then over time in six months in a year, you, you're lifting you know, heavier weights. So, um, uh, and reading, also allows you to be a little more uh, grounded because it gets into your subconscious mind. So you start experimenting and living based on the content that you consume. That's why it is important to watch what you read. <laughs> and, and be careful of what you read. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So, also to add to that, Reading also helps with memorization. Right. It helps with critical thinking. Right. It helps build discipline and consistency. You know, when you're reading, like Brother Gabe was saying, you're channeling something in your brain. You're causing your mind to focus. So it also builds focus, yes. you know, which a lot of us need. So it, it builds fundamental 
blocks in your mind to help it elevate, you know? Reading does a lot, you know? Uh, of course, after reading, you get the understanding, you get the wisdom, you get the use of the application, you know? But you, it, it helps stimulate a lot of ideas as well, you know? So it helps get your mind flowing and get it into that flow status, which we all, you know, want. Okay. Hey, y'all hit the nail on the head. Can I add two cents to that? Yes, sir. They touch bases on everything, but you also got to remember by you reading, it also makes you a chameleon. It makes you presentable to everybody because you can actually speak to any and everybody because you can actually reach different levels of people because you read. Meaning if somebody don't understand, you can break it down for them. If you're dealing with somebody that got a high IQ that actually speak the way you speak, you can speak directly to them. You don't have to look at them sideways, nothing like that, because they understand you for the words that you speak because reading builds your vocabulary. It also makes you very, very, very focused when it comes to wordplay. You can read in between the lines. That's all I want to say. Okay. That sounds good to me. Okay. Uh, so we've read, and in reading, we focused. We've uh, sharpened our anal analytical skills. We're, we've come to the point where now we are pretty much able to make a decision based on the knowledge. Okay. And now we're ready to go out and do, okay? And that's where the experience comes in at. The big fallacy that, that the world teaches, especially among the young, is that I need to experience it for myself. We had another meeting, Zoom meeting, and Gabe mentioned uh, if you go to fire, somebody tell you fire will burn you, okay? But... Uh, how many kids gonna go and still stick their finger in that fire? Okay. I can remember being in Louisiana. I was about seven, eight years old. We used to go out to the field and pick berries and we were in this field and there was a fence. It was one wire, okay? And everybody else, all the boys bent down and went under that wire. And I had an uncle four years older than me, and I asked him, what is this? Why is everybody avoiding this wire? He says it's, elect it's an electric wire to keep the cows and horses in the pasture. Now, he's four years older than me. I say he don't know what he's talking about. So I picked up a big green leaf and touched that wire. <laughs> and it showed me what it was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I mean, if you think I'm 71 and I still remember that experience. Okay. So, uh, all I had to do was listen to him. But that's the way we are. We want to experience stuff. And so, oftentimes, going through the experience route, it affects our responsibility. Because with the responsibility, that means we are out, we are held accountable for the end game, for the end result. So uh, talk to me a little bit about the responsibility. I think in, in the church setting, they say who much is given, much is required. Come on now, you all in red, you got some knowledge. Now what you gonna do with it? You know, I was uh wise man once told I, me I, you gotta follow up before you can leave. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm I'm gonna add this. I was taught with rank comes responsibility. Well, I apply that to age as well. You know, as a youth. We all want to be grown, and we didn't know what it cost. <laughs> I'll say this. 
Yeah. You know, I should have took my time to be young, Man. you know, or be a child. <laughs> you know, when we when we get to these age, this age of being adults, our decisions affect us, good or bad. We sow what we plant. You know, we plant, you know, what we sow. We sow our seeds. So when we sow, when we make our decisions daily, we have to do our best to sow good seeds or try our best to sow more good than bad because these decisions that we make today will affect us in the future. Might not be tomorrow, might not be next week, but it will affect us. Everything we sow today will affect us in the future. So our decisions mean something. So that comes into responsibility, being responsible in our actions because proof is performance. And if we don't, understand the actions we were taking we need not do anything as you know what i'm saying because the actions we take today or the decisions we take today will affect our uh our future yeah which is what we're responsible we know which is what we're responsible for so res responsibility covers a lot you know and one of the things we have to be responsible for is our decision making and understand that as men and for the women as well we have a lot of things we're responsible for, but do we take the time to understand the decisions we make that could affect what we're doing in the future? But see, we have this thing going around, this attitude of immediate gratification. I want now, okay? I, by any means necessary. So if you have, that Porsche SUV, okay, and you step out of it and go in the store, I want a Porsche SUV. So why can't I take yours? And that's that's what that's what get a lot of our young black men locked up is that I want now. And not accepting the process. And not understanding that I want what I want now, or at least what effect is going to have on my future, what effect is it going to have on my parents, what effect is going to have on my children. But we forsake all of that because I want it now. So how do we address that? Yeah. So I do believe that. Unfortunately, uh, we are all speaking on this platform, right, which is a public forum in the public square where people can get, you know, information. And uh, But the, in the same platform, people are also being sold a lot of false premises, right? So the process is, you always come down to the knowledge first because the responsibility people have the wrong illusions out there and they feel like whatever they follow is the right way or you know so uh the instant gratification people are showcasing lifestyles and things out there that are totally false okay you know and people gravitate towards that illusion um so i think that us, you know, students of knowledge, students of light, our responsibility is to shed the light. Okay. Because the more we shed the light, the the, the more we stop the, the bleeding. Okay. Right? Because we can't blame somebody who has no knowledge for being irresponsible. Right? We can't blame somebody who maybe grew up in an environment where that's all he knows, right? So um, I think that our responsibility, first of all, I think responsibility needs to start with self. We can right. not assign responsibility to other people. We are responsible for everything that happens to us. We are responsible for the kind of legacy we want to leave on this experience, on this planet, on this, you know, uh, in, in community environment. So. Our job is to, uh, uh, I mean, my primary responsibility, I'm going to speak, I'm going to practice what I preach, right? My primary responsibility as Gabe, 
as a student of light is to continue to work on my knowledge, study my VSL, work on my, you know, study my rituals, be an example of light and shedding a lot of light to all, all others around me. So that they ask me, hey, how, why, you know, I want to be able to contaminate others with light. That's my responsibility. Okay. But it starts okay. with self. It does. It does. And I believe okay. that I believe that in within each of us, we start off, God puts in us the feeling of right and wrong. Um, sermon. Yep. Okay. Bottom line. So when we talk about responsibility, again, if you have that that uh, Porsche SUV, and I want it, I like the color, the all everything about it. I know when I take it, steal it. I know how you're gonna feel because I know how I would feel if I lost it. Mm -hmm. So, so here's my point. You said we, you can't blame a person because of the environment, where they come from, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I agree with that up until you get about 10, 12, become a teenager. Because, again, they know loss. And they know how they feel, how they would feel if they lost something. So why would I want to inflict, inflict that on somebody else? So my responsibility prevents me from taking what is not mine. True. That's, that's where morals come in at. My responsibility prevents me from wanting doing some stuff because I don't want my children to see me on television in handcuffs. Bottom line. You know, my, my my mother has been dead for 10 years, and I still say I'm trying to make her proud. So I, my, my whole point is we have to ignore I want it now and then succumb to the process of acquisition. Hello. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and and one one way to 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 succumb to that um, is to have a big, big why. It has to be greater than ourselves. Because you want your responsibility is way bigger than you. I mean, you, you keep yourself grounded. Yeah. Right? When you know you have you have children, you have a wife, you have brothers, you have you know, you have a big community that looks, you know, up to you. Yeah. You're not going to be perfect, but you're going to be <laughs> on the earth. You're going to be like, yo, like this is, you know, like brother, what's his name? Sage, Sage the Great. You got a platform, for example, right? So you're talking to hundreds yeah. of people every week, right? So, I mean, I'm not saying you, you got to live your life, but now a lot of people are listening and watching what you say, right? So mm -hmm. your actions, uh, it's part of your responsibility to empower yourself, embed yourself so that it starts speaking volume to your actions and your community, your, 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 how you call it? Uh, not your followers, you have your audience. Your audience is empowered as well, right? Now that you're on, like, I'm mm -hmm. not, you know, like, you know, so some people have YouTube channels and things like that. So I'm so afraid of social media, man, because like, man, you know, because it's it's a big responsibility, right? Like you have, you know, thousands of followers, like people, it's the day you make a mistake. It's like, oh, right. Yeah. So it, it, it's uh, it's a it's an honorable calling. Um, but it comes with responsibility and that requires constant sick of knowledge and applied knowledge because well, you can have the knowledge but if you don't apply it you, you're responsible from the jump yeah you you have to live in a glass house for sure right uh -huh. you have to live in a glass house uh i i was went to a convention in new orleans we're in the courtyard of the Hyde regency 
and some brothers sitting out there smoking weed. And I ain't, I'm not talking about 20 year olds like Jason or 30 year olds like Sage. I'm talking 60, 70 year olds sitting out there smoking weed and we're there for a Masonic conference. Okay. And I'm going, y'all don't have a grip on what it is you're involved in. And I believe, I, I like to say that people need to see what you say and hear what you do. That means you have to be on point. A uh, Gabe called you out, out there, Sage. You can't do what you what you used to do. You can't do what your what your buddies do because the eyes are on you. The eyes are on each one of us when we step out from the crowd and say we want to make ourselves better. So now uh, some things that might have to be done behind closed doors. Of course, of course. When they I come down to it, everything you do is transparent. Yeah, I, I can remember I can remember being in my early 20s going home, driving home, and I got to this four-way stop sign, and I stopped three times for one stop sign. Now, y'all will figure that out later. I wasn't seeing double. I was seeing triple. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, true story, Brother May is going to account for this. Like, when I decided to change my life, that's when she hit the fan. I ended up going to prison. So the whole time I was in prison, I did nothing but educate myself. I isolated myself for those who didn't serve me, and I actually put my best foot forward. I came home in 19, August of 19. I haven't been home that long. Everything I've been doing is actually to better myself and remove the negativity that I was surrounded with because the way I see it, I can always help them. But when it's more of a hindrance to my growth than anything, I have to remove myself. I can't get at my energy. You know what I'm saying? Right. I have to remove the ties and set boundaries. And I'm in the process of doing all that as we speak. So for him to speak, he's actually speaking on the things that I'm actually doing at this particular moment. Because in order for me to grow and be the man that I'm supposed to be, deserving to be, have the things that I want for myself and my future family, I got to continue to put my best foot forward. Now, I don't just associate with everybody I used to associate with. They call me all day, every day. My number hasn't changed, but I don't get them my energy. If they need advice, I get them good sound advice. Outside of that, I can't come hang with you. I can't come to your house. I'm not, um, no, because at the end of the day, it's not going to help me get further in life. You're pulling me down instead of picking me up. Absolutely, brother. Bro, absolutely, brother Sage. And like, um, you got to change that number, bro. <laughs> you got to change it. <laughs> hey, but this is the catch, though. When I say number, I really mean social media because, you know, being oh, a social, okay, okay. like an in, influencer, know, if, if this you don't really want to just have your dial, stuff private. Okay, okay. Because you, you don't want to open yeah, that door, so. right? If, if you make a, if 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 you're on your path of transformation, you don't want to open that any types of doors, right? You you want to shut them right now, right? And, and, and make sure. So all right, yeah. But that there is a place for everybody, and everything, and everybody and everything has to be in that place. And so you might have to do what they call nowadays ghosting some people. Okay. And yes, you're going to be critical. Yeah, that's like. But if a person is not, now that's control because you got to control your environment. Okay. You got to control your, your physical, your, you got to be in control of your vessel. You got to control your environment. Okay. You have to control how you interpret and react to everything that happens. If you go to, um, I think January 18th, 2018, the affirmation, okay, that talks about how to uh, separate yourself from the masses, okay? So you, you do have to be in control of your vessel. And in order to do that, like Gabe said, you're going to have to minimize contact with those negative or those that are not aiding you in progressing, okay? 
So you, you got to be able to stand flat footed and on your principles and hold on to your mission. I said um, most want it now. I want it now. So you got to accept the process and then ba and work it. You got to work it. You got to work the process. And that's that's the thing that we don't want to accept. I also got to trust it. Well, hey, yeah. that, amen. That's where you read. Okay. That's where you read. Uh, this young man went off to college and uh, he got there. How you doing, Brother Wright? And got there. And so he called his grandmother and said, Big Mama, I need some money. I'm, I'm hungry. You know, she said, well, grandson, read the Bible. Okay. And uh, so he didn't like that answer, but he went on and he called her again months later and said, Big Mama, I need some money. I'm, you know, I don't have anything to eat, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. She said, well, grandson, read the Bible. Okay. And so eventually Grand Big Mama died and he went to the funeral and had the Bible and uh, sitting there at the service, he opened the Bible. And that was about two or three hundred dollars in the middle of the Bible. Huh. Okay. <laughs> that's a that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> you it just is a don't good know. One. You just don't know. So <laughs> brother Wright, we've been talking about knowledge, how you get it, and where you get it from, what's the best source, responsibility not only for yourself, but for your family, for others that see and know you. And then we're talking about having control. Having control, that's a big, that's a big deal. So any comments on knowledge, responsibility, and control? Man, Grant, <clears throat> Grant, it's three things you like to say. I want to end it off or responsible with this. You say uh, work, Pray and patience. Big three. Okay. I had a comment on that. Uh, also, I just wanted to remind people of my incident back in February. And uh, you never know a people's mind state and what they're going through or, or if they're totally got it together, whatever. So as we're making our decisions, as we're interacting with people, uh, number one, we're obligated to <clears throat> contain uh, to control our vessel. That's number one. But if you don't control your vessel like you're supposed to, man, it could be very uh, catastrophic. <laughs> I'm gonna say that. So uh, at the very least, you, we need to under our obligation. You know, at all times, we need to be thoughtful of what we're doing, what we're saying, and how we're interacting. Like you say, we don't want to leave people with a bad taste in their mouth. And then at the very least, you know, we don't know how they're going to react to the different things that we may do or say. So we need to be on our square at all times. Yeah, you got to control your vessel. Brother uh, Al is talking about, uh, he was traveling, driving, and had a little incident on the road with a woman. And uh, hey, he thought it was over with, got out, was getting out the van, and this lady ran into him trying to kill him, OK? So that was a, a very good example of road rage. But if he had the control of his vessel and just left it alone instead of responding to this incident, it could have been, it would have maybe never happened. So we do have to watch what we do, when we do it, and of course, be in control of our vessel. Now, th these videos here, fellas, are very, very pertinent and powerful to our, uh, and contribute to our progress. Life is progressive. We're supposed to increase progress as we go. <laughs> so we're talking about knowledge, responsibility, and control. And the next video is can't say enough about words. Yeah, so talk to me about the words we speak and so forth. Okay, while y'all are quiet, I'm going to do a commercial because, see, in this video, I mentioned Masonic maturity through scripture. 
This book is designed to elevate your moral and intellectual level and stimulating your thinking. It's an easy read. It does have a lot of scriptures, so you need your Bible when you read it, okay? And But at the same time, I know you like this commercial, don't you, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but this book has been sent, bought, and sent all over the, the world, okay? So if you don't have it, get it, read it. And uh, some of you on, on this call have already read it. Uh, I like the way Brother Mays handled it. He bought it, called me. I said, well, let's do so-and-so, so-and-so. He said, no, I'm going to read your book first. <laughs> In other words, I want to see what you're about first. <laughs> hey, I keep if, it with me all the time. Daily yeah. read. <laughs> if, if this book is good, then I'm going to call you back and we're going to talk. I mean, Mark. that's what he, he told me, point blank. You might be full of crap, you old man. I don't know who you are. I'm going to read your book first. <laughs> then I'm going to call you. Okay. <laughs> so I got you I got your message, Maze. Okay. <laughs> so I guess it's okay. Masonic maturity through scripture, and you can read buy it on Amazon.com. If you don't know the title, just put my name in Herbert Ware. It's about um twenty dollars. All right. The second video is part one of Can't Say Enough About Words. The law of words. Let me put it this way. The words that we speak <clears throat> are the stamp of approval on our thoughts. Any comments? How I speak to you, what I say to you, the words I <coughs> use, the tonality I use expresses my thoughts. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the scripture says that life and death, are, uh, the power of life and death are in the tongue. And so truly we cannot rise above what we speak. And so uh, we have to be very careful. Uh, we can pray something in one minute and in the next, very next minute we can cancel it out with our words. And uh, because, mm -hmm. you know, once you, say, you start speaking and it gets into your spirit. And if you go off into work and you are, you know, you wake up mad or whatever, thinking about what's been going on the day before or whatever, and uh, and you get there and you already have a negative attitude and, man, we ain't going to never get this done. And by the time you, you've already been defeated before you even got started, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and so it's your whole outlook. You know, we have to, like I say, it's a, it's a mental, like Brand just said, it's a mental, you know, step on your thoughts. And then those thoughts becomes words. Those words become actions. Those actions become habits. Those habits become uh, uh, basically your future, you know. So uh, just by speaking, we can bless or curse our future. I got four things for you. And uh, Grand, I'm stealing this from you, man. This is something I've been saying a lot. There's four things that's impossible. The first thing, you can't put toothpaste back into a, uh, the two-paste can, the two-paste tube. Two. Number two, you can't kiss a girl leaning away from you. Number three, you can't jump over a fence leaning forward. And number four, you can't take away words I already said. So number four resonates, you know? All of them are true, but number four is the most powerful one to me. Because once you say something, it's out. It's done. There's nothing you can do to replace it. But I'm so just but have... I'm just I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna George, use my name when it comes to George, words. George Mays, you ugly, but I'm just kidding. Hey man. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Is, is that the, yeah. is that what people do? Yeah, yeah. And we, we have to be we have to watch that. We have to discern. We have to discern the true intentions of that person. Or there's envy or jealousy. Very true. Very true. Words can be used as manifestation tools or manipulation tools, depending on how you use them. Your intentions create the words to be what they are. If you use them in ill intent, you're pretty much casting a spell on whoever you use them on. When you use them and manifest them for greatness, you pretty much project what you want into the universe and it comes to you. So... So what should you be after? 
You should be at the prosperity, peace, love, good will, health, you know, generosity, everything that you would give to yourself that you would want for yourself in a positive frequency. You should want that for everybody around you because by you wanting that for everybody around you, you create a beautiful place for yourself and everything that's in your universe. Okay. Another, another thing, I want to I wanna say one more thing. Another thing, the Bible say, be slowful in speech. You know, talk little and hear much. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Words can, words can promote unity or cause separation. Absolutely. Bottom line, that's what they do. It either brings you closer to me or it pushes you further away from me. You know, um, we have two ears and one mouth. God wasn't crazy when he did that. Okay. Right? So, which means we got to hear twice as much as we got to speak. And um, in the Bible, it says in Colossians 4, 6, that let your conversation be full of grace and seasoned with salt. So, I always identify myself as a mini God because he created him in his image, right? So, he That's gave me true. all of his attributes. I have all of the attributes of God within me. And in Genesis, when he started, he said he created with his speech about the light. Yeah. So uh, it is important that on a daily basis, when we wake up and when we, before we go to bed, we set the stage for our day and for our night with the words that we cultivate. It is very, very important. And, you know, I mean, it elevates ourselves. And if somebody even talk trash to you and say something bad, it might come back to them because you're already elevated here. It won't affect you. So I think that self-thoughts, self-affirmations creates your environment. It attracts the right type of people, the right type of opportunities. You know, protection from whatever may come your way. You know, um, so we need to use our words to get to shut up. Hey, you know silence what? is a word, by the way. Big sense <laughs> You, you yeah, froze up a little bit there, Brother Gabe. Um, there's something called the law of first mention. Okay? If you want to know about something, what you do is you go. You can go to the Bible and find out when it was first mentioned. Okay? And I, I thought that, that came to my mind because of what you were saying about God making us and uh, or making the universe and said, let there be light. Let there be light, yep. So bottom, and then there were light. So the bottom line is uh, whatever we speak is supposed to come back. It will come back to us, okay? So I can't afford to let you move me <laughs> off my center because if I react to you in a in a in a bad way, say something, do something, what I do, what I say is going to come back to me. Now, I do say this. You don't ever, ever, never, 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 ever, ever, ever want me to have control over you. You don't want me to be the one that can make you go left, be mad, be happy, be sad, be glad. You don't want to give me that control. Okay? Why? Help me out. Why? Why don't you? I'm a nice guy. Why wouldn't you want me to have control? Because at the end that's of the not, day, nobody control you but you. you that, that's giving, not your responsibility. You was given discernment to make your own choices. So if you take my life and make it your own by telling me what to do, how to live, I would never be happy. I will always be miserable because even though you're a nice individual, at the end of the day, 
what's for you is not meant for me. So how can I actually have my, my gifts and my blessings if I'm steady giving you everything that's meant for me because you asked for it, because you tell me what to do? No, 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 no. I'm not taking How am I using my discernment? How no, do... I, I'm going to be nice. No, no, no. No, I'm but I'm saying you, it like I'm that. I'm going to help you get what you want. No, I'm saying it. <laughs> but I'm saying it in a sense of control because at the end of the day, in a sense, I owe you my life. Now, my life is not yours. I'm not meant to serve you. I'm meant to serve the high most. So with that being said, if I give you real power over my life, what is my life? Okay. Yeah. What'd you say, Joshua? I said, yeah, that's true. See, my, my thought is this. If I can make you glad, I can make you sad. I can piss you off anytime right. I want to. I can press all your buttons. I can tell you, right. I can put a battery in your back. You're going to do what I tell you to do. So you it's don't. Good. What control you do don't, you have for you? You don't control your environment. Yeah. So you right. don't give any man control. Go ahead, right? No, I'm just picking back on what he was saying. You know, that's right. He, he's still in control of you. If he can piss you off and do any other things that, uh, that makes you mad, you're not in control of yourself. And all that, you're in balance. that falls back under self-preservation. Okay, what do you mean self-preservation? Uh, I mean, having control of yourself, your, your thoughts, you know, your intellectual well, about your, yourself. You know, you should know yourself from the inside out uh, uh, through anything. And, you know, that was a phrase I heard many years ago that said, a person can't get your goat if they don't know where it's tied up at. You don't let them know where it's tied up at. <laughs> I, I can remember being in high school, we used to hoorah or play the dozens. Y'all might, y'all too young, maybe you don't know that term, but we talk about one another. And this yeah. was always done in fun. But if I knew talking about your mama made you mad, if you started getting the best of me, I bring your mama into it. Then when you get mad, everybody laughing, right? Because I knew how to get you. Push, push the buttons. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, so words, words can control a person, and you should make sure other people's words do not control you but rather your words control you. Right. Okay. And, and, and for those of us that are, that are Mason, uh, when we read our ritual and then are led to the Bible, we understand what the words, how important words are. And one word used in a different context can mean a, something totally different. Hey, uh, I want to ask you a question. I want to piggyback on something one of the brothers said uh, a few minutes ago uh, when uh, I think he said um, it was something about um, uh, about blessings. You know, you could be so blessed with any and everything and you should want everybody that's in your environment to be blessed like you. But sometimes you can have some people in your environment and you be blessed and they just not recipients of the blessings. And what I mean by that is that it's kind of like what the old saying y'all say, I could take you to the, to the uh, well and want you to drink from the water, but to receive your blessing, but I'm taking you there, but you don't want, you don't want to take them. So how do you deal with Yeah, You understand what I'm saying? I could, I could, I could I'm going to use this as I can be a billionaire. And I want, I'm giving you the, 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 the solution to become a billionaire like me, but you not reading the material or doing what you supposed to do to become a millionaire. So what do you do about that? It's kind of like, I'm, I'm trying to help you to get there, but you want to stay in, 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 in the poor environment. And I've been there and then, then came up, you want to still stay there. So what do you do about that? You're taking us to a different, uh, topic a little bit, but let me. It's it's a it's a very good topic. But I got a scripture. I am, about I, I, am, I am only going to take you to the well so many times 
before I stop taking it. Because that spot that you're standing in, another man would be overwhelmed to be in that spot drinking from the well. So right. I'm not going to cast my pearls before swine. If you're right. not going to listen, if you're not going to heed the advice, okay, and this was going back to like knowledge and so forth, then, hey, let me move on and find somebody else that's willing to accept what I'm what I have to offer. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So um, to, 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 to your point, uh, Grandmaster Ware, you know, so, so, so Joshua, you said uh, you're a billionaire and you want to help somebody like, you know, become successful like you, right? So coming back to the first topic, KRC, you acquired okay. a, a good level of knowledge, right? right? To become a billionaire. Right. You're responsible enough to keep those those billions or whatever right you need to have control on who you want to spend your energy on right absolutely you know what i mean like okay when you come to the doctor and he's like hey you got to take two pills of this and two pills of that okay he's not gonna put it in your mouth he gave it a prescription and he's talking yeah. to the next patient <laughs> right <laughs> you gotta go so, feel a prescription not so put it in your mouth Exactly. So, so you can emotionally dis detach from the outcome because they have to be the, the there is no shortcut to the process. Right. That's and nobody exactly. can, you know, like no one, you know, no one can escape the process. You know what? I want to add on to what Brother Gabe said. It's that person's responsibility. Right. You did your part. Yep. So it's that person's responsibility to receive the knowledge Page. that you're willing to give to them, uh, understand it, and act upon it. Now, it. One, of the, one of the things that's, that's going to help us capture that, accept and capture that knowledge, because anything you say to me is going in here, and it's resonating within the middle of it, which is in my brain, and I'm going to give it some thought, okay? But again, what solidifies the thoughts, the seeds that you plant are going to be the words I speak. You see, we have three main gates to our spirit. And now we're not talking about operating on the soul. We're talking the spirit. And that is what we see, hear, and say. And so here we're talking about, uh, as I said in Proverbs 18, 20, from the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. So you give me a thought on how to make money or give me a thought on how to have peace in my life. Right. Okay. So I need to come back and solidify that thought with the right words. That's why I promote those affirmations so strongly because right. it gives you words of growth to say. Okay. And then when it comes down to dealing with other people, we should be cognizant of what words we use because in Proverbs 16, 24, it says gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. So I always want to give you, leave you with something good. Now you could be a butthead and you could have been rude to me. So what did I do in that case? Oh, yeah. So I got some. So look, the Bible also speak about a foolish person and what to do with them. When you're around a foolish person and you're wise, sometimes you got to walk away. Don't deal with them. Don't have, don't converse with a foolish man or woman. Just walk away. Yeah, turn the other cheek. No, it ain't, right. it ain't necessarily turning the other cheek. It just takes two fools to have an argument. Right. That's very true. Yeah. And, and maybe part of their process is to get burned without fire. Maybe they got to go through the fire first and come back to you like, oh, yo, Joshua, remember me? I called you last year. You know, that maybe that part of their process is to go through it because sometimes, okay, we may not, we, we may have a process that we want to share. 
but our experience is not somebody else's. Because there's a difference between our intention and their destiny too. It's not time yet. Exactly. It's not their time yet. The game of 2022 is not a game of 2018. It's not a game of 2012. I had to go through whatever I had to go through, right? In order, in order to get to. Exactly. And I had my and I had my Joshua that I made in 2012. And I didn't listen. Right. You know. So it's 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 as long as you 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 do your part, you're good. You just walk away. On to the next one. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Just do your mm. part. Yep. And then it ain't, it ain't everybody's season either. That's another thing. Simply put, that only help true. those who are willing to help themselves. That is true. That is true. We're looking at words again, uh, going to part two. Um, you know, one of the things, and Gabe touched on it earlier. We have two ears and one mouth, okay? <clears throat> we have to be mindful of what words we allow to come in. You got to be very mindful because, again, the ears are one of the key gates to your spirit. And there are people that have bad spirits, right? Yeah. Okay, okay there are people that with bad spirits. And so... We have to be sure, we have to be cognizant of what's going in our ear because it goes from the ear to the mind and from the mind to the mouth and from the mouth to our life. So uh, we got to be careful and make sure that we hear what is right, what is good, what is wholesome, okay? You know, in the Bible, it says, let he that have ears to hear, hear. Now, I can listen to you talk, but it don't register. I tell people all the time, man, if you got a problem, you need to moan and groan and complain, I'll give you 10 minutes. And you don't have to worry about me talking about what you, your problem, because as soon as I leave you, I'm going to forget it. In other words, like the old folks say, it's going in one ear, coming out the other. So I'm basically saying that uh, you got to protect your mind. You got to protect your vessel. You don't want anybody to come and dump garbage on your front porch, in your mind. Okay? You don't want me to come to you and say and talk bad about Jason. To you, because guess what? I'll probably talk, go to George and talk bad about you. Okay? Yeah, that's the stuff I don't want to hear. <laughs> well, that's the stuff you've got to cut. I think somewhere down the line in one of these videos, I recommended a 30-day positive diet. Now, anybody remember what that is? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh the positive diet consists of uh <laughs> just um inserting positive in, into your um, into your conscious. Turn off the TVs, turn off music. That's not gonna be a, a positive energy. Turn off all that stuff and only you know um only bring in positive information which consists of either reading your Bible, uh, reading something wholesome that's going to help you become a better person, but a positivity. Staying away from negative negativity, which encompasses friends too, family members too, if you can get away from them. But 30 days of just positivity, cutting off all distractions. Yeah. And, um, and also to... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah also, yeah, also to add on that, you also need to have your quiet time during those 30 days where you have your 30 minutes in the morning to, you know, reflect on what you want your day to be, speak positivity into the day, and then your 30 minutes in the evening 
where you recollect all the positivity and then try and um, desert the negative thoughts of the day. So you have to have your 30 minutes and, you know, you have to have them with God. That's your quiet time because we tend to pray a lot and we don't tend to have time to actually sit down and listen to what God is trying to tell us or what is trying to be said. We tend to over talk or, you know, um, be ignorant about some things. So that's just my opinion. Nice. Very good. Good, brother. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that uh, positive diet, you know, people want to know what's going on with current events and all that kind of good stuff. Don't worry about that. Somebody will break their neck to tell you who shot John, <laughs> shot Rob, okay, what uh, Kardashians are doing, and so forth. Joshua has written with me a time or two, and he'll tell you. You don't hear radio or CD or DV or any of that stuff in my car. That's I, I've, I've driven from Houston to Dallas with no radio, no nothing. Yep. Okay? Don't need it. I am comfortable with me because here's what I'm saying, what I say with that, I call it windshield time. I solve my problems. Gabe said, said something to me that I didn't like. I'm going to re- figure out everything about that conversation and how to handle it on my trip. That's what I do. I don't need to listen to Beyonce, Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, and all that kind of good stuff. Okay? See, here's the thing about these words, fellas. What you hear goes into your, what you hear goes into your spirit. Your hearing is a gateway to your soul and your spirit. And what is in your spirit will show up in your life. So if I'm always talking negative, talking about how people are misusing me, or I got over on this person, that goes into my spirit. And that shows up in my life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, when I, and I was, I was, it's funny. I was, I was talking to my, uh, I was talking to one of my good friends earlier this morning, and uh, he's very big on, you know, morning affirmations and meditation and all that stuff. And uh, he was able to 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 land a very very lucrative, you know, contract and stuff like that. And uh, but a year ago, his life was totally different. Right, like he, she's totally different. Um, and I told him this: your life today are a representation. You show when I see your life today, I can predict your affirmations from a year ago. Hmm. Okay. So, once again, it's a process. People need to understand that it's not that you're gonna do this. And and Grant, like this whole diet thing, got to be permanent for us. It has to be that it shouldn't be 30 days of this, and I'm going back to listening to. <laughs> you know what I mean, like the diet got to be permanent. Otherwise, we're just going back to the, you know, it's like you just took a nice shower, then you're going back to the trash can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? So, you know, our goal is should, it's, it's like, if, if you want to become a vegetarian, for example, you're not going to cut out the meat all at once, but maybe eat meat twice a week, once a week, three times a week. And, you know, like any other vices, the diet needs to be progressive to permanent. This is my humble opinion. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. okay. mm-hmm. Mark, Mark 4 in the Bible, Mark 4, 24, verse 24, uh, People were told, pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And still more will be added to you. Yep. So you got to, again, pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use, based whatever you do, based on what you hear, it will come back to you and it will be added. So that means 
more will come back. If you're listening to negative negativity, you promoting negativity, it's going to come back to you. So we got to make an adjustment, brother. Okay? And it starts with you, and you got to be willing to stand steadfast, flat-footed, and be talked about, ostracized, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I can tell you from, from experience, I used to say I'm I'm somebody everywhere except at home. <laughs> okay. I got a question for all of you guys. When when was the last time you looked at yourself and you told yourself that I love you? This morning. I tell myself every day. Okay. Okay. I tell every day. Um, okay. say, because I feel like um, self-love is the beginning of love for others. If you yep. do not love yourself, you will hate the world. Absolutely. So you, you tend to yeah. give out negative energy, just pours out of you. You enter a room and bring down the vibe. And, yeah, so you, it's, you have to love yourself before you can love others. You have to help yourself before you can help others. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm guilty. I didn't do it. Yeah, man. All right, Grant, you got to Starting tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and I'm happy as a peacock, okay? But I <laughs> I had I hadn't used those words, okay? <laughs> so uh hey, sounds good to me. That's the way it goes. Um so anyway, we just we're moving along. We we're covering these seven videos and uh we're gonna talk about Try and speed up things a little bit. Okay, uh, did any of you listen to the interview with Apostle Moore? Hello, this is Grandmaster yeah. Wayne with Mount Tabor Grand Lodge YouTube channel. We're going to forego the mask for a minute here. I'm with Apostle Gene Moore. Senior. Okay, y'all can't see that, can you? March of Faith Minister. No, nope, no, Grand. We can hear it, but we can't see it. Thank oh, really? Thank you for participating. Right. Uh, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Bill Graham. What about <laughs> now? I've been a member yep. of his yep. we can see it. for some 16 years, and much of my uh, inspiration, knowledge, and wisdom has come through the teachings and preachings of Apostle Moore. Yes. And I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the. Uh, but, you know, because I love teaching, I love education, I love teaching the Word of God. And I want to thank you for allowing me to have that honor to of teaching you and sharing, you know, to perfect the saints. All right. That's how you start growing. That's how it happened with me. But it's a good thing to start out yourself. But if you stay with it, no. And your heart is really serious and sincere, Holy Spirit is going to. He'll take over. And after a while, you said, you know what? I'm feeling something that I haven't felt before. All right. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit is the revealer of the word. But thank God that, uh, you know, they bought a Bible and started reading it. <laughs> That's a good sign. Right? Nothing that is permanent in this world. That's why everything in this world is, is decaying, is fading away, is deteriorating. Because, and there's a season to everything in this world. Everything that pertains to life and living is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, employees and also church members. Mm -hmm. So what would be your advice to a man, not only a mason, but a man, who's looking for uh, that church affiliation nowadays for himself and his family? Well, what, you, what, what guidelines, what do you think you should look for? Right now, he's going to, first of all, have to make his mind up that no more traditions. But I want to hear God. See, God, he started out with Adam. God has never operated station to station. It has always been person to person. That's the way it's, it has always been, and it's going to be that way. He saves us person to person. Not station to station. And what has happened 
in a lot of our churches, in America especially, we have prayer, for example, prayer, we don't pray. We, we leave that to another group to pray. That's y'all's job to pray. My job is to come, pay my money, and look and listen uh, with all of thy heart thy, uh, to act now. Prayer. Okay, fellas. <laughs> Uh, I didn't have a script for that one, and when I clicked on it, I got the video. So I just let you hear some excerpts. Any any comments on that? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I have some. Man, um, go ahead. A few things he said. There's a season for everything. Uh, I like what he said about the stations. You know, God don't operate by stations; He operates through people. Something we uh you said like grand is we're interdependent. We all depend on one another for something. And we have to remember that, you know, as 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 uh as as mankind. You know, I'm I go to the grocery store to get some meat. I'm waiting on the butcher to cut up the meat in order to, you know, bring me the meat for me to buy. I go to get the meat, I go to the cash register, someone right there. You know what I'm saying? We all depend on one another, you know what I'm saying, for everything. You know, you go buy a car and somebody right there that can assist you with that. You need your car fixed. Somebody assist you with that. Now, another thing with dealing with people, God communicates through people. He gives people messages sometimes to even, you know, talk to you, you know what I'm saying, all right. about that. All right. You know, and that's where power comes in at. You know, unity is important, you know what I'm saying, when we're talking about mankind. You know, uh, united we stand, the body we fall. We all need one another. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, to, to Brother George's point, our unity extends as all one body in the universe. Okay? We are all one. We're just different pieces of the same body. All the way, the way we treat even um, the animals and the, 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 the environment, because we need those, those forests to breathe. We need those, you know, to take care of the, the, the different sea uh, levels and, and shores and just making sure that, right, like everything that the way we care, we take care of God creation affects us one way or the other, whether it's human beings, whether it's vegetation, whether it's and the animal kingdom. Yeah. We have dominion doesn't mean that we got to be, you know, jerks, <laughs> right? Okay. Right? <laughs> you know, so, so you know, I, I, and he mentioned um, things evolve. So we need to have an adaptive mindset of evolution. We're not static, but we need to be always mindful that as we evolve, we gotta be firm to our discipline and foundational and precepts and principles. But you see, we are tied up in, or we exist in a Babylonian society. Mindset, yeah. Which, which is filled with feed, greed, fear, <laughs> greed, and- Divide and conquer. Yeah. In <laughs> other words, only the strong survive and all that kind of good stuff. Okay. Survival of the fittest. Yeah. yeah. Those are wrong. Those are wrong approaches. We are all one. I see myself in all of y'all. I you got know, Like we are all, yeah, that's my interpretation of it. You know, if I tell you what you can do is um, go back and if you find some old clips of Dr. J, basketball player. Mm-hmm. He was the first one to do the sky hook. I mean, sky dunk. Okay? Javar did the sky hook, but Al, uh, Ir Dr. Irvin, Dr. J, Julius Irvin, would dunk from the center free throw line. Okay? And then, of course, Michael Jordan came around, and he got famous for it. And now you got people jumping almost out the arena. 
<laughs> I, I was watching uh, uh, on YouTube somewhere where this young man, and I mean this young man, less than 25 years old, jumped up and his head went to the top of the backboard. My point is, somebody better is always coming along. So you got to be careful how you do what you do and and how you treat people, what you what you give to people, both words and deeds, because somebody younger, stronger, better is going to come along. And what we should do is take our seeds today and plant for our tomorrow. Okay. Any questions, comments? We, we're down to if you are serious. The video, if you are serious. Uh, I like what Wish for Master Searles out of New Orleans said. Chance favors the prepared. If you're prepared, you got a good chance of success. Now, Habakkuk 2 and 2 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write down the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run and read it. How many of you are actually write down what it is you want? I know, Gabe, you talked about a vision board, right? Absolutely. You know, and, and by the way, when I look at my vision board from 2020 until now, I had 10 pictures, I already had manifested seven in two years. And there were no small pictures, by the way. There were no, like, I'm talking about <laughs> crazy pictures. So I do believe in the power of manifestation. You okay. know, vision boards. Um, and, and I, to, to brothers, uh, um, when we talk about success, Preparation and opportunity together definitely guarantee success. Because we're always going to come across opportunities, right? Online, friends, referrals, on the street. But the level of preparation is definitely important. Okay, let me take you back. What is a vision board? Okay. I wish I was at my home, but I'm in a, okay. So I want to show you guys. So the a vision board is, it starts with thinking. So you sit down with yourself and you write down how you envision your life in the next 18 to 24 months. So you got to reverse engineer it. So you're going to say, I want to get married or I want to buy a $300,000 house or I want to buy, the, I want to drive this kind of car. I want to have this kind of job. Like you write down whatever. And by the way, don't, don't be intimidated by the, by the ambition or the, the, like the greatness of what you want to achieve. Because sometimes because of our mindset, we're like, Oh, I can't live in this neighborhood. I can't drive this car. I can't have this business. Just you have to let that go. You have to come in as you are the creator of your destiny. And you're going to write down what you want to create. Once you write that down, now you go on Google and you identify the best images of the action item or the points that you've written down. So if, it, if it's a half a million dollar house, a million dollar house, whatever you want to do, don't be limited. Don't be afraid of numbers. Whatever you want to achieve, if you're into business and you want to say, I want to do a thousand dollars a day, write that down. Like don't be intimidated by any number. And then you post that on the wall. So basically you print out a bunch of pictures of all the different items of the board. You put that on the, on, on in your, ideally in your bedroom. So if your bed, if this is your bed, you want to get crossed, like you want to see it when you wake up and when you go to bed every day. And you include those items in your affirmations. I am an owner of a half a million dollar house. I make a thousand dollars every single day from multiple sources on a continuous basis. Okay, I'm, you're not saying I'm gonna own a half a million dollars. I, I, I own, 
I own. I say, and I always speak in the present. So you speak it in the present and you reverse engineer. So speaking, it doesn't mean you ain't got to do nothing. Okay. Looking at the vision board doesn't mean it's going to fall on your lap. Now, part of your prayers, depending on, you know, everybody's rituals, you reverse engineer. What are the things that are missing in my life for me to get there? And don't try to understand how it's going to happen. Just believe it's going to happen. First person, present tense. I like that. Always present tense. I never talk about the future. Because when you say, I may, I hope, I will, hopefully, God's willing, you're already throwing out your faith. Right? So, God doesn't, when God created everything, it didn't say, I will, I will create, I will, hopefully there will be light. No. Like, just, it's now. It's instant. Yep. All right. Any questions on that vision board? That's, that's <laughs> worth delving into. Any Anybody have any questions for Brother Gabe on that vision board? Okay, let me put it. Let's move to the next one, which is time. That is the one thing that all of us are given. God gives us all how many hours a day? 24. That's it. And what do we do with the 24 hours? Exchange it for. What we have today is a testament to how well we've used our time in the past. Hello. And our resources too. Yes. So everything is temporary. Let me say this. I like this. Uh, to everything, there's a season. Okay. Uh, to everything, there's a season. So we have to be very cognizant of where we put our time because everything is temporary, even happening. So whatever, wherever we put our time, I would say we want to do, we want to put it where it's going to produce the biggest manifestation. Okay. Any comments? We got a few minutes left, and this is where I want to be. The spirit of increase, brothers. Did uh, any of you get to that tape? The spirit of increase. Hello? Yep. The six fears, the six most powerful, <laughs> dangerous enemies of increase. Fear of poverty, fear of old age, fear of ill health, fear of loss of love, criticism, and death. Let me tell you about the number two, the fear of old age. See, I got a remedy for that. Okay, don't nobody want to know? Are we, are we waiting. Okay. <laughs> We're waiting for you. <laughs> the fear of old age. Everybody on this call is younger than me. You surround yourself with those that are strong and what you weak in. So, hey, if I want to stay young, guess what? Now, I'm not going to give me no dread. So, <laughs> 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 they said I ain't going to do it, okay? <laughs> but here, okay, here you guys can help me keep youthful. You follow me? And just like the, 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 there's so many years difference between our ages, I can keep you or help aid you, aid you in becoming wise because I've gotten so far down the road. So if I share with you, you share with me, guess what? We both eliminate fear. So you don't have to have the fear of poverty, okay? You can sustain a fear of criticism because your family, your friends, 
business associates are going to criticize you when you step out from the norm. So, hey, that's what we're all about. But those six fears are uh, tough. I, I love what it says in Proverbs 9, 1, where it says, wisdom built her house on seven pillows. She built, now, now what's the advantage of building your house on seven pillows? Good foundation. Exactly. Good foundation. Exactly. That's what, the, that's what these Zoom calls are all about, is preparing us and giving us a good, solid foundation. <laughs> now, let me say this to you. <clears throat> the height with which you uh, uh, achieve in your life is the floor for your children. Hmm. Sorry, can you say that again? Yes, sir. Okay. The height that you achieve in your life is the floor foundation for your children. Amen. So if you... So haven't done anything with your life, what do your children have to stand on? Nothing. <laughs> you okay. have to leave a legacy. Go back to the temptations. Papa was a rolling stone. All he left was alone. <laughs> okay. Bottom line is we want to leave something behind for others. Now, it might not be for our particular family, but our family will benefit from it. Okay? Comment. Okay. Go ahead. On the spirit of increase, uh, we have to remember that uh, we serve uh, God is a progressive God, and it makes sure it's a progressive science. And so we must also be progressive in our nature because we're his creatures and he's our creator. And so uh, from the very beginning, he told us to be fruitful and multiply. It's about advancing, moving forward. So at all times in our life, as long as we have in breath, we should be learning, we should be moving forward. We should be increasing. Uh, there's not a point in our life that we should ever get, uh, uh, com become a complacent. Complacent. Yes. Yeah, complacency. <laughs> now that's, that's, your, that's another, another enemy too. You know, you get complacent and then fall into Lodosius. And that's what you do not want to happen. So we have to keep that fire and that zeal that we start off with. Now it's it's, it's kind of hard to keep if, if you're not doing the things that you're supposed to do as far as your studying and your speaking and everything else. So everything has to be congruent with your walk. And like Brother Gad said earlier, you know, uh, it can't just be a one-day diet, a two-day diet. It has to become a lifestyle. And, well, that's, you know, why, uh, that's why we go back to KRC. Hey, yes, sir. KRC is, is a vital ingredient in the spirit of increase, okay? And, and a man without self-control is like a city that has no walls. Whatever, whatever, whoever chooses to run in there, run in and out of that city, okay? Whatever, whoever decides to come into here and just do whatever they want to do within your mind, within your thoughts, within your life. Now, Proverbs 25, 28, a man without self-control is like a city broken in two and left without walls. So you got to have control of your vessel. That's what this is all about. Now, there are times when we look at people and they obtain wealth Okay, maybe they hit the lottery, maybe they rob somebody, whatever the case may be. But anytime somebody has instant gratification, it's going to dwindle, it's going to fade away. Why? And they didn't work for it, so they don't know how to manage it. They don't know what it's worth. No appreciation. Their appreciation for it. If you worked hard, if that's your heart and sweat, then know the way you it because you knew what you struggled to get. Exactly. 
It, and, and Proverbs 13, 11 says, Wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. So the bottom line is, as the old folks say, you got to pay your dues. During that time of growing, you're learning what it takes to keep what you get and to multiply it, okay? So you got to appreciate the process. Now, we talk about creation. Uh, how many of you like corn on the cob? What the cob? Yeah, corn, the <coughs> corn on Is the cob. Is it like cob. roasted corn? Yeah, roasted corn, whatever the oh, case. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Yeah, I love it. So what's, how do you get it? You got to... Uh, uh, till the soil, you got to plant the seed, you're going to get a stalk, okay? You're going to get a bud, then you're going to get a stalk, then you get an ear of corn, and you got to let that grow for a little bit to get a full ear, okay? Right? But remember, I said earlier, I want it now. Progress. Say so what? Fogers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like um, also in that video, um, when when I went back and read the, the prayer of Jabez, um, you know, God blessed him a lot, but the increase started internally. So people, the 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 what people get wrong about the process is that. <laughs> They want to manifest externally without going through the internal process of increase. So my understanding of, of and reading the process of Jabez towards his blessings, he was able to build himself up from the interior and manifest it on the external. Absolutely. Absolutely. And going back to that, I'm going I'm to double back on this. You have to work, pray, and have patience. Outstanding. So, also, look. come in. Go ahead, quick. quick. Uh, also, uh, we have to recognize that God blesses us to bless others. And even with Jabez, with King Solomon, that when they prayed and asked for wisdom and everything else, it was so that they could do uh, not just for themselves, you know. And that's the whole thing about masonry, you know. It, it's, it's not about selfishness, you know. We have to be selfless. Outstanding. All right, fellas, look, we've had a, a lively conversation. I think we've covered some dyna dynamic topics. Uh, hopefully, it's been beneficial to you and to others. This will be on the YouTube channel. I forgot to ask your permission, Jason and Sage, about videoing you and putting it out there for the world to see, but. Oh, well, so bad. That's, I'm fine with it. Yeah. That, publicity you, is publicity. At this point, you have <laughs> no saying? choice. I'm going to do what I want to do. You shouldn't have got it here. You didn't want to it here. Okay? How about that? I'm such a nice guy. That's <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Mr. Well. Yes, sir. I hate to cut the... I hate to leave the Zoom meeting. I just got a first call in New Canaan, so... Uh, I got to head on out to New Caney, but uh, when I finish with that, I'm going to call you when I leave New Caney. Sounds good. Okay. Also, uh, one final comment. For those who are planning on uh, being a part of uh, or coming into the orientation classes, we will be starting at the end of this month, but you will need to have your uh, monies paid in full before you can be able to attend orientation class. Okay. And, uh, but Jason, I will send you a application. Thank you. All right. Uh, Jason, you in Houston? Yes, sir. Okay. And Sage, you in Houston too, right? Yes, sir. Okay, gotcha. All right, fellas. Uh, Gabe, you let me hold tight. In Georgia, let me end the recording. And uh, we're going to do this again in two weeks. I'm going to send another seven videos to you for you uh, to review. And we will discuss. Okay. Uh, 